Uh, for the purposes of the video, I just wanted you to know that I took a heat pump class at the local community college. It was uh, three or four semesters long. I got my universal card to buy refrigerant, but I really never had a job repairing heat pumps. Um, I installed the heat pump system here at the house, uh, but for the most part, I really don't work on them. This video is just to let you know that there uh, is a item that fails often that you can fix yourself and I'm going to show you how to discover it and repair it. Wow, it's hot out there. I hope the air conditioner keeps working. Well, mine went out and it was just the capacitor. It was an easy fix. You don't have to be a special service technician or know anything about heat pumps to fix it. But I'm going to carry you through the steps of discovery so that when you do replace the capacitor, you know it's just the capacitor and you'll be back online with some cool air coming out the vents. Well, I can see the fan's blowing, uh, so I know the fan is working. And that's the inside fan to the air handling unit. But I put my hand over the register and it does not feel cool. Well, you need to check the obvious. You need to make sure that it's set on cool, that your temperature setting is uh, lower than the temperature indicated, and the, the greater the difference between the two numbers, the bigger the clue that uh, something is amiss. So I have my fan on auto and the setting on cool says cool on uh, so make sure that uh, it's demanding uh, cooling uh, especially if you have kids you know someone could have messed with it you never know so I go to the return I open that up and make sure that the air filter is sort of clean um, I usually write the date on it over to the side there I'm not going to zoom in but I write the date on it so I know how old it is but if uh, it looks relatively clean and it's uh, recently changed, I'll just uh, head on down to the air handling unit. All right, next you can approach your air handling unit and you can check the uh, tubing. The little one should be warm and the large one should be cool. And just peel the insulation back and it's cool. Uh, you can remember the small one should be hot. It's like a straw, it has the liquid which is hot and the large one has vapor so it should be cool. Alright, next on your to-do list is to check the breakers. So you want to check your breakers. Hopefully you have them labeled. If not, then you just want to look to see that they're all over to the side. Um, off is all the way over and if it's tripped it's just barely over to the side. Uh, sometimes you can't even tell. Uh, so if you can't really tell, you just uh, flip it all the way off and back on. You're not going to hurt anything. You can do that to all of them if you want, just to make sure. All right, as you approach the outside unit, what you want to notice is that it's not running and that it's not iced up. I have some growth here, which isn't good, but um, so that's the main thing you want to notice because if it's iced over, you're going to need a technician. Uh, even I'd call a technician. Uh, so, what you have here is no fan running, no compressor running, it's hot in the house, and the uh, inside fan is running. So, you want to go to your box, your breaker box. You want to go to your breaker box and you and you lift it up a little bit and pull it out and you have a switch in here it's not a switch it's just connects the electricity if you hadn't flipped it inside you'll notice there's an on and an off you can pull this guy out flip it over put it back in and now the on is covered and the off is exposed or you can just leave it out completely well, there are four screws that hold this panel on. There's a top one. Uh, you'll notice this one uh, is not holding the panel on. 
and a bottom one and then two more on the other side. All right, you want to check your circuit board. You want to look for burn marks. If it has a fuse, you want to look at the fuse. I don't recommend pulling it out unless you can see that it's broken. You know, you want to check your wiring, make sure everything's nice and neat. No little critters have eaten through it. Uh, check your relay. Make sure your relay looks good, that there are no bugs in there that could stop it from uh, closing or opening. And then in my case, here's the offending piece right here, this Pepsi can looking thing. Uh, and that's the capacitor. You notice that it's rusty on the top and it's swollen. I've already labeled the wires uh, for the compressor, H-E-R-M, for the fan, F-A-N, and for C is common. I spelled it out, common. Label your wires before you pull them off. Also, pull your wires off before you take the piece out. That way the bracket will hold it for you. And always use pliers. And the reason you use pliers is because you, if you pull on the wire, you could separate it from the connector and it'll look like it's connected, but just the insulation is connected to the uh, connector and, and the wires are broken. So always use pliers and always grab it right here in the metal and on the metal uh, next is just a little screw that holds on the bracket you want to take that out put your new one in all right you install your new capacitor and you get it in place and the bracket will hold it firmly unless you went a size down if uh, for example this is a 55 and you went to a 50 the uh, 50 might be smaller and not fit in your original bracket but anyway so you get the same size and you install it you have something to push against you can uh, just put the fan on the fan the common on the C and the compressor on the uh, HERM however you want to say it and you're all hooked up ready to go do a quick check again make sure there's no bugs uh, make sure all your wires are nice and clean, haven't been eaten through by field mice or whatever. Uh, and your circuit board doesn't have any brown spots on it where it might be burnt. And we should be good to go. Don't forget to flip your connector back up. This uh, provides power from the breaker box to the pigtail which goes to the uh, outside unit and it should read on you should be able to see the on all better so what about a replacement part well the local supply house where I actually bought the heat pump from has a policy now where they only sell to contractors uh, you know heat pump technicians and uh, so commercial accounts basically so they told me they could open up a cash account but they also told me a place where I could buy it locally if I wanted to of course you can buy it on the web all day long I mean amazon.com offers uh, free super saver shipping and they're reasonable price uh, there's plenty of places online that will sell them to you if you need one immediately right away uh, I'm sure someone locally especially if you live in or around a large city, uh, should be able to help you. Uh, you can always pay the overnight shipping unless it's Friday, then it's not gonna arrive till Monday anyway, so it's kind of a big waste. So anyway, Amazon, uh, there's plenty of places on the internet, and then locally, be careful locally. Um, worst case, uh, you open up a cash account at a local store, big whoop. So anyway so it's out with the old and in with the new and what I want to do is show you the difference um, and how you can identify if your start capacitor is uh, suspect uh, 
for one thing there's some uh, corrosion on here but that really doesn't matter too much uh, what you want to look at is the fact that it is uh, swollen, it's bowed up. And of course if it's completely broken, if there's oil or you know something leaking out, if the cap is completely askew, then you know that's, that's really obvious. But the main thing here is to see that bulge in there. And there's a little bit on the bottom, uh, but that's more difficult to see. Uh, for the new one, uh, notice how flat it is across the top. So uh, no bulge. And, and I don't know if I can get it on camera, but it's marked fan, C for common, and then Herm is the compressor type. I believe it's related to the valves, the type of valves that are on there, and that's abbreviated. So, but the main thing is to see that the new one is flat and the old one is bulged. Also, you need to know the voltage. In this case, it's 370. And this one is 55 and 10. So 55 and 10, uh, when there's two numbers, it's a dual. When there's one number, it's just a sing single, and it just has two connections. So the 55 is going to be for the compressor, and the 10 is going to be for the fan. So you want to watch that voltage. Uh, could be 420 or 370. Those are your two choices. And then the compressor start uh, you can go down by five I could have put a 50 in there but uh, this particular one's 55 you'll see them they're all over the place 10 is pretty much common I, I think there might be some fives out there uh, most all of them are 10 so the voltage and get to the start within five that's uh, plus zero minus five That'll get you back in the game. All right, and this guy is your single oval start capacitor. Usually has a metal finish. Again, you need to know the voltage and the starting microfarads. Uh, for your inside fan, for your air handling unit, I highly recommend you stay with what it is, whether it's uh, 5, 10, my experience is limited. I've only seen 5 and 10. So, and again, new one flat, old one or broken one or one that's done that's a suspect will be bulged. All right, let's have a safety moment. Um, you do not want to arc across these. Uh, this is a new one. It shouldn't have a charge in it, but I'm not even going to demo by touching it. It's a capacitor. That means it has the capacity to hold a charge. When the compressor motor or the fan demands electricity so it'll start, this gives it a kick. A little energy reserve to get that motor started. That's what its purpose is. It holds a charge so when the motor wants to start, this thing throws a, some voltage at it, some amps, and kicks it. Well, you don't want to be kicked. Uh, it can zap you pretty good. I don't know about death or anything like that, but you'll know it. So just don't touch across the connections. I mean, that should be common electrical sense, but you know, I'm assuming you're just a homeowner trying to get your heat pump back up. So, word of caution.